Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today's video is something I haven't done in quite a while. I am doing a TBR swap with Izzy from Happy For Now and everything that she's sending me to read is manga and I'm kind of a manga noob. Honestly, I'm really excited about this. Izzy is one of my co-hosts for Chapter 3 Podcast, and we recently did an episode about where to start with graphic novels and manga, and I know almost nothing about manga and came out of that episode really wanting to try stuff, so I was like, hey, what if I send you some graphic novels, you send me some manga, and we do a vlog collab? And so that's what we did. So if you want to see the graphic novels that I sent to Izzy, check out her video, which I will have linked down below. I'm really excited to see what she thinks of them. I think I sent her six graphic novels that are all ones that I really love, and I have no idea what she's sending me. So I'm really excited to find out. This is not everything. She said there's two more packages coming in the next couple of days, and I want to say she said she sent me like seven or eight different manga series, so it's going to be exciting. I know some of what she sent me is romance, and excuse me, I, listen, I know I don't know all of the correct manga terms. I know there are highly specific terms for different kinds of manga and who they're aimed at, and I don't remember which thing is which, so apologies. I am a noob to this. But yeah, some of them are romance, some of them are fantasy. I don't know exactly what, so let's find out. Maybe they're things that got mentioned in that podcast episode. That would be fun. Okay, so first up, oh cool, okay. This one was actually on my wish list from that podcast episode, so yay. This is Wotakoi, Love is Hard for Otaku. Uh, does it say volume, volume six? Why did she send me volume six? Is that on purpose? Wait, did she send me the whole thing? Okay, I don't know if that was on purpose because this is definitely volume six. Did I accidentally put volume six on? <laughs> did I accidentally put volume six on my wish list? Is that what I did? That is definitely possible. If so, I might just go out and buy myself the first volume. <laughs> like, the, I feel like this is probably my fault, not Izzy's fault. But yeah, I know that this this sounded like a cute sort of workplace romance with like geeky people. Cool. But yeah, this is definitely the last volume. That's probably my fault. Next we have Sweet and Soap, volume two. I know she said for a couple of them she was going to send me the first two volumes, so I'm guessing this is that series. This also looks like it's a romance one. It says, On Their Scent, Asako, Yashima, and Katari Notori, I don't know if I'm saying these right, I'm sorry, sensual, sensual, because it's about smelling, relationship is going well, but they've decided to keep it a secret from their co-workers for now. I think they did talk about this in the episode, so that looks cute. What else is in this box? Um... Oh yes, okay. Volume one of Sweat and Soap. So here we go. Oh yay, I'm so excited. Okay, this was one that I was also really wanting to read, Witch Hat Atelier. This is volume one. And uh, this is like a fantasy series with a magic school. I think it looked really cute. It's about a kid, Coco, curious and bright and desperate to learn how magic's wrought, but witches keep their secrets hidden tight. I want to say they said that this one was an award winner as well. And look how adorable that cover is. Okay, I'm really excited about this. This should be fun. Next we have Blue Flag. I feel like I've seen this cover. I think maybe I heard Shay from Shay Geeks Out talk about this at one point. I don't remember much about it, but she also knows a ton about manga. Love is already hard enough, but it becomes an unnavigable maze for unassuming high school student Taichi Ishinose. Am I saying that right? I don't know. And his shy classmate Futaba Kuze when they begin to fall for each other after their same-sex best friends have already fallen for them. It's like some kind of a love triangle, I think. I don't know. It sounds, it looks cute. I heard good things. Ooh, cute. The last one in this box is Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts, Volume 1. Interesting. So this one is definitely another fantasy one. I don't think I've heard about this. The ferocious king of beasts rules over his subjects, animal and man alike, with an iron paw. <laughs> In a display of domination, he demands regular offerings from the humans, but there's something amiss with the 99th sacrifice. Unlike her predecessors, 
Sarifi isn't afraid of the king. Will her insolence lead to a gruesome end or a new beginning? I'm guessing a new beginning, but um, that sounds like fun. So cool. Thank you so much to Izzy. I will let you know when the other two packages get here. And I, I'm going to go track down <laughs> volume one of Wotakoi because... Uh, yeah, I feel like that was probably my bad putting volume six on my wish list. I, I would do something like that. Hello, I've got two more packages from Amazon. I'm pretty sure these are the two other manga pieces. Let's see what we've got. Yep, that's a manga. This is I'll Never Be Your Crown Princess, volume one. Love the cover. It looks fun. It's in plastic wrap. I will not be your plaything. Liddy, who was Japanese in her previous life, is now the daughter of a duke and engaged to marry the gorgeous crown prince Friedrich. Sounds like a dream come true, except this is a world that practices polygamy and Liddy refuses to marry a man with multiple wives. To sabotage the engagement, she loses her virginity to a stranger, but that plan is thwarted by a surprising revelation. Um, so we've got like a sexy fantasy romance. Interesting should be fun so we'll be reading that one and then we have our last package uh oh this looks cute skip and loafer volume one mitsumi is bound for high school in tokyo she's got book smarts but this small town girl is about to find out she's massively unprepared for the social norms of big city high schoolers sounds cute and for the record i did go ahead and order volume one of wotakoi which you know what if i end up loving it i'll be happy to have the final volume so we've got all of this manga that i will be reading i will check back in once i get started with it and we will see how it goes did izzy pick well for me Good morning. I am finally ready to start this reading project. I'm very excited. And today I thought it might be fun to go someplace in New York City that I've never been before. I live in New York City and I am a member of the Met, but I've never been to the Met Cloisters. I don't know how I've managed to never go, but I haven't. And I thought today might be a perfect time to go check it out and bring some manga along with me to read. So I'm going to take you with me. The Met Cloisters is in a rebuilt monastery and it has medieval art and I've seen pictures of it. It looks lovely. It's an unusually beautiful day in New York City today. It's 75 degrees. Probably this is going to be our last heat wave before we start getting towards winter. So I'm going to take advantage of it and we're going to go hang out and read some manga. So come along with me. halfway through the first volume of Skip and Loafer on the train and it's adorable. I'll talk more about it later but I am really enjoying it. This one is about a high school freshman going to school in Tokyo and she's super awkward and nerdy and this you know sort of lazy hot dude is into her and it's very cute. <laughs> did some holiday shopping and I am off to find lunch. There is a seasonal cafe, but unfortunately it's November and it's not open. So I gotta go find some more to eat. I had some lunch, I made it home and I have finished the first two volumes of manga. So let's chat about them. This was freaking adorable. I loved it. I would definitely continue on with this. It's just so cute. Like, I love the characters. I love the subversion of expectations of, you know, what people are going to be like based on 
who they are in high school. It, it's just, it's very cute and very funny. It made me happy. And, um... I could do with some more feel-good things in my life. Sacrificial Princess and the King of the Beasts... It was fine. I, like, I I definitely didn't like this one as much. Um, the basic premise of this is there's a girl who is supposed to be sacrificed to the King of the Beasts, or to be eaten, except it turns out during the secret ceremony that he's been saving the girls because he's half human and he turns human during the ceremony, um, but then she wants to stay with him and he's going to make her his queen and stuff, and she's like very childlike and bubbly. I, I don't know. This one just like didn't hit for me in the same way. I think part of it is that she does feel so young and he's not I, I I wonder if this is kind of like a thing that you get a lot of in manga and I have read a manga where that worked a little bit better for me where there was a younger and a much much older character but with the the personalities and the development of it it just worked whereas this I just kind of I don't know I don't know. I don't know that I can even tell you to put my finger on what it is about this that isn't really working for me. Like, it's fine. Um, what would I rate this? I don't know. I Like, I'm so unfamiliar with manga, I feel weird about rating things. So, okay. So, like, Skip and Lover. Five stars. It's great. It was fun. I loved it. It was, it was like, adorable. This is, like, two and a half, maybe. So I didn't love it as much. Um, but I will read another and check in. I read Blue Flag and I liked this one. This one took a little while to grow on me, but by the end of it, I was pretty invested in all the character relationships and I am interested to see what would happen. This is one I would probably continue with, also Skip and Loafer. Um, I, this one is contemporary high school love quadrangle with queer characters, and yeah, I like it. Like I said, it did take a little while to get into. I think two of the nerdier characters are just so, so anxious all the time. It's a little bit intense and it takes a while for them to kind of calm down enough to have personalities. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I Again, I don't read a lot of manga, so I don't know how much of this is just kind of conventions of characterization, but I think it's cute. It's interesting and I would like to see what happens. I'm gonna read another one. Basically, I'm just gonna see how many volumes I can get through before my kids get home from their after school activities. All right, I finished manga number four. I think I might just have time to read one more before the kids get home, we'll see, which is pretty good, five out of the eight. Um, okay, so this one is I'll Never, Be, I'll Never Be Your Crown Princess. It is an erotic fantasy romance, and I was warned ahead of time that manga is not always the best with consent, and that is certainly the case here. So, like, I know this is a thing in manga, much like it used to be a thing in bodice rippers, but I still don't enjoy it. Um, like, it's, it's unfortunate because I feel like the premise of this could have been done in a way that I would have enjoyed more, but some of the, like, super fuzzy consent stuff and lack of... It, mm, I don't know. Um, the basic premise is there's a girl who's the daughter of the Prime Minister who is forced into an engagement to a prince, and she does not want to be engaged to him, but for reasons, you have to be a virgin to become queen. So she goes to a masquerade ball trying to lose her virginity to a stranger, and does so, except that, of course, the stranger turns out to be <laughs> her fiancé. And then he, like, magically puts a flower on her, like a flower seal tattoo thing on her, claiming her so that she has no option, which I just, I, I, I don't like. I don't like the lack of options. Like, the whole thing of him turning out to be her fiancé, that I don't mind. I feel like that could have been done well, but I don't like that he is, well, number one, like, I love you after I immediately saw you. It's like literally love at first sight, which I'm like, okay. 
I mean, I guess it's like a short format, so I suppose I can, no, but mm, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about the love at first sight thing, and I don't like the claiming thing that takes away her agency. That said, you know, like this has tropes that I can really enjoy depending on how they're done. So I didn't hate it. I I think the the concept of having this stranger turn out to be your fiance after all, like that's part that part is fun. It's just his behavior that I don't like and I like her as a character. So would I keep going with it? I don't know. Like I know this is a thing in manga and I feel like a lot of people just kind of put up with it, but it I mm, not my favorite. So far we've kind of been like two hits, two kind of misses, but I feel like it's introducing me to a range of things and I don't know that I'm necessarily supposed to have a positive reaction to all of it. Um, I don't know. Anyway, it's interesting. So I'm gonna read probably one more and check back in. All right, so I read volumes one and two of Sweat and Soap, so let's chat a little bit about them. One thing that I wanted to make a note of that I, I keep seeing is it seems like the cool people or a lot of times the guy love interests have blonde hair. I don't know what that's about, especially since everybody's Japanese but they have blonde hair. Interesting. Um, okay, so I really liked volume two of this more than volume one. I liked volume one, but one thing about it is and I, this seems to be like an ongoing theme is these like really nervous girls who are like freaking out and in their heads all the time. Um, is that just like a thing in manga a lot? I, I feel like in volume one, there was a lot of that and it was like making me feel anxious. I don't know if that's strange, but that was kind of how it made me feel. And then I feel like in volume two, things were a little bit more settled and I was enjoying more of the development of their relationship. This is kind of like the premise of this is bizarre, but it's like a surprisingly sweet love story actually. So the two characters work at this company that makes scented soaps. The guy has a really good nose and develops the scents and the girl works in the finance department and has a problem with sweating a lot and he smells her and likes her smell and is like, I need to smell you for inspiration and then they end up kind of dating. So it's like weird but it ends up being this really cute romance between the two of them. So um, volume one, three stars. Like I liked it, but I was like, okay, we'll see. I'm glad she gave me volume two because I really enjoyed volume two, four stars probably. And I think after having read volume two, I would be like, yeah, I would probably read more in this series. Um, I don't feel like desperate to pick up the next volume, but I enjoyed these. I'm curious like what people are gonna think of my reaction. I don't really read a lot of manga, so I don't even know like what exactly what to even say in terms of giving you interesting commentary on them, but I like their relationship. I think the biggest thing for me, based on what I'm seeing so far, is I want to see balance and good communication in the relationships, and I feel like they have that here. Like, there's consent if they're getting together, and it's cute. I like it. So far, my favorite has still been <laughs> the first one that I picked up, which is funny. Um, but I've got a couple more things to read, so I will check back in once I've read more. Good morning! Last night I read Witch Hat Atelier and this was awesome! I loved it! This is, I would say, middle grade fantasy and it's so cute and so interesting. It follows this little girl who wants to be a magician and she discovers some secret things to do with it and ends up becoming a magician's apprentice and it is so charming and delightful and fun and everything that I hoped it would be and I see why people love it. It was cute, it was funny, it's got interesting world building. I for sure would want to continue on with this series. Um, yeah, this was an easy hit for me. Also the art is beautiful and I really love it. I don't know that all of these are things where the art really stood out to me, but I love the art design. I think the artist did an amazing job. So I think what's going to be really interesting is at the end of this video to go through and look at 
which pieces of manga worked for me, which didn't, and why, and how that might inform what I do or don't pick up in the future. And you know, I really appreciate that Izzy tried to give me a range of kinds of manga to try because I think this is exposing me to an array of what's out there and giving me a sense of things I do and don't like. So we'll see. And I think she kind of knew this going in but still gave me some things to try that I am just more sensitive than some manga readers to things like consent and power dynamics. And so I in in some cases things just don't work for me for that reason but I think it's funny that something like in Sweat and Soap it gives me anxiety because the characters have so much anxiety all the time. I really liked volume two because there was less of that but volume one I was like I feel so anxious reading this because they look so freaked out all the time and on edge and it's not helping my anxiety which uh, I wouldn't have expected but I guess because of the visual medium you really see that art reflecting how they're feeling in a given moment and when it's like constantly on edge super high anxiety that affects me and I'm wondering is it just me like do other people who read manga feel the same thing like anybody else out there who has anxiety and has read manga and has read things that make you feel anxious because of the characters being so anxious I don't know if that's just me or if that's like a thing that other people deal with I feel like it's probably not just me most things are not just you so the last thing I need to read is Wotakoi and then I will check back in, let you know what I thought, and then we'll kind of do a discussion of what I have taken away from this experience and rank all of the books. I did it! I finished reading Wotakoi, Love is Hard for Otaku. So this is English volume one, which includes volumes one and two of the Japanese edition. So it's a little bit longer than the other ones. And it was really cute and funny and super nerdy. It's basically about a group of friends who are dating each other who are really, really nerdy. Um, like, it's two couples and they're all friends. I will say, you know, like, are the relationships sometimes a little bit toxic in terms of people being mean to each other or girls slapping their boyfriends because they're mad? Yes. Do I condone that? No, but other than that, I did find this very entertaining and very charming. I think if you are also quite nerdy and into like video games and comics and stuff, I think it's a lot of fun. So I enjoyed this. This would probably be like a four star read for me. And um, especially since I accidentally ended up with the final volume of it, it is one that I might finish and it's not that long of a a commitment if I did it. This was really fun. I liked it. Overall, <laughs> oh my god. So there are the eight books that I read for this project. Thank you so much to Izzy for sending them along and don't forget to go check out her video where she reads the graphic novels that I sent to her because that'll be fun. Uh, I'm excited to see it. Let's discuss my thoughts on these overall and what I learned. The two that I liked the least were both fantasy romances. Which is, which is kind of interesting. I think in both cases, my biggest problem is the power dynamics and the issues of consent. And so even though I don't know that this is uncommon for manga, it is still something that I don't particularly enjoy. So I'll never be your crown princess and sacrificial princess and the king of beasts. I wouldn't continue with either of these. It's just not enjoyable enough for me. Now granted like there are things that have problems where I enjoy it enough that I can kind of look past it and still read it. For me that's not really what these were doing. So if you enjoy them totally fine but I think for my personal taste they were misses for me. And listen I know these aren't terrible. I know they could be a lot worse. The consent and the power dynamics are not horrendous which is why they're two and two and a half stars not one star. <laughs> but still um, just kind of makes it less enjoyable for me. Then we have Sweat and Soap, which I liked volume two better than volume one. I don't know that I'm invested enough in this story and in these characters to want to continue on with this series. I'm not mad that I read them. I think it's a cute story. I just think that for me, the energy of the characters is not a fit for what I like. The girl is way too anxious all the time and the guy is like a lot. He's really intense and not 
my personal favorite kind of character. So while I like this, I don't have specific problems with it. I think this is just not entirely to my taste. Then we have my two four star reads in series that I probably would be interested in continuing with. Blue Flag and Wotakoi both had things that I enjoyed. Neither of them was perfect. They both had some things that I was like, oh, okay, like I don't 100% love this, but I was having a good enough time with the other parts of it that I'm not so bothered by like some of the toxicity in some of these relationships, for instance. And I would be curious to see what would happen later in this series as well. So I liked them. I like that we have some queer representation in Blue Flag and would be curious to see what else would happen. Very solid picks, four stars. And then my two favorite things that I read were these. Uh, Skip and Loafer was my first book that I read for this project and I think it is the most freaking adorable thing ever. I love it. I love the sort of country girl in the big city thing. I love the type of the hero. I just, this was so my jam. I really want to read more in the series. I was thoroughly enjoying it, smiling, giggling. It, it was great. I also adored Witch Hat Atelier. This is so cute. It's the kind of fantasy that I enjoy. I love these kinds of apprentice stories. Five stars for both of these. Definitely the hits of the experience. So I actually feel pretty good about this. We've got three series that I don't plan to continue on with and four series that I do. And I'm not mad about it because honestly like I can't read all of the manga. This was a nice introduction to some of what's out there and maybe some of the conventions of the manga genre. I don't see this ever being the biggest part of my reading but it is something that I would like to get into more and I think Izzy did a really great job of picking a selection of things for me to give a try to. So I guess if there's anything that surprised me it's probably the fact that only one of my favorite series is fantasy and that one is not a fantasy romance. So it makes me wonder a little bit whether most of the fantasy romance series have some of the the issues that I was talking about. I'm not really sure. If you read manga you could let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, really positive experience. Thank you to Izzy. Don't forget to go and check out her video and let me know in the comments down below if there are other manga series that you think that I should give a try to. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.